Thanks for listening to the Belonging House Fellowship Podcast. Here is this week's message from Chris John Otto and the House of Artisans. This is Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So now we come to the gospel reading. And as you all know, I do this one differently than all the others. And if we were in real time, live live in person and in person, not live on live via satellite, we would all stand up. So this part of the service comes right out of the synagogue. If you're Jewish, There's a point in the synagogue where the rabbi goes up to the tabernacle, which is a big cabinet in the front of the church, or the synagogue, sorry, synagogue. Open up the synagogue. They take out the Torah scrolls. They uncover the Torah scrolls. And then the Torah scrolls are carried around the room. And all the men wearing tzitzit, the prayer shawls, touch the Torah scroll with their tzitzit. And then the Torah scroll is brought up to the Bema, which is the big lectern in the synagogue. It's unrolled to the appointed place, and then they read from it. They read from the Torah, the words of Moses. When the church was established, the gospel lesson replaced the Torah. And I think you're, I hope you start to recognize that we have a pattern here, that everything we do on a Sunday is always going to take us back to Jesus. So Yeshua is the fulfillment of Torah. Yeshua is the Torah. He is the word. And as we heard in this gospel and this reading from Jeremiah, the Lord Hashem yud Vave said that he would write the Torah on our hearts. So when we come to the gospel lesson, we do a couple unusual things. First, we stand because the rabbi is in the house. Second, we make the sign of the cross again, but this time we do it differently. We make a cross on our forehead. May the word of the Lord be on my forehead, in my mind. We make it on our lips. May it be in our mouth, and may it be in our hearts. Now, does this, as I do this, does this make any sense to you? Do you know where this comes from? It comes from Torah. It comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6. You shall put, may the word of the Lord be in your heart, mind, and on your mouth, and in your heart as you walk along the way. May it be upon your doorposts. May it be bound on your arms. So we want the gospel on our in our minds, on our lips, and in our heart. This isn't religion. And a couple times today, I'm going to read the 
the priest prayers out loud. These are things that the congregation doesn't generally hear. So before I read the gospel, I say, cleanse my heart and my lips, O God, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. So we begin with the Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Also with you. Hear the holy gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Now, among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was then, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to them, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew went with Philip, and they told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant be also. For if anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it and said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him, and Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show what death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Praise Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now, you notice I kiss it every time. And that's because I'm kissing Jesus. That's why I do it. It's to show love and gratitude. And then there's a sermon. So, because it's an educational day, I decided to preach a two-hour sermon on this text. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but as you noticed in the readings we've shifted we've shifted because we're into the two weeks before easter next week is palm sunday if you're a monk your day the daily office readings change today um, from mm -hmm. for the next two weeks they're very different um this week will be more intense but the week before holy week is a uh, the readings for Holy Week are very intense. It's all of Lamentations, and uh, every day is one chapter from the uh, Upper Room Discourse, beginning with John 12. So John 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 are the days before Easter. Jesus is the fulfillment, as I said, of the, of the Law and the Prophets. Mm -hmm. Years ago now, two years ago, I think, I spent a whole year practically saying that Jesus Christ did not come to establish a religion. Right. Jesus Christ came to establish a kingdom. And today we see this. Jesus came to establish a kingdom. What is this kingdom? This kingdom is about restoring a relationship with the Father. This kingdom is about giving us access to the Holy Spirit that was withdrawn when Adam and Eve broke their relationship with God. This kingdom is about writing the law of God in our hearts and giving us one law to love one another, a law that's impossible to keep. And the only way we can do this law is to love to is to lean into him 
the other morning I wrote, I made a video on the street in London on Friday. I was, I was all upset about things. There were very various things to be upset about this week. Um, and I, I, I wrote a, uh, did a thing about prayer, short video about prayer. And because, you know, people tell me how they're praying for me. And sometimes these prayers are, are less than great. So I was going to do a thing on prayer. Like, don't pray for faith. Don't pray for patience. Don't pray for strength or power. Do you know why you don't pray for these prayers? Why you don't pray these prayers? Why you, they're not good prayers. They sound really good prayers. Do you know what God does to give you faith? God gives you yes. problems. That's right. God gives you problems. That's problems. Right. So don't pray for faith. Faith is not like ice cream from heaven that you eat. No. Faith is an ability mm -hmm. that rises up in you to overcome. Don't pray mm -hmm. for patience. Do you know why you don't pray for patience? No. Because you'll just be stretched and have problems. You'll All wait, kinds of wait, wait. And if you're praying for faith and patience, you're going to have problems and wait. And I've heard so many people do this and they pray this for me. Ah, uh, then my, you know, don't pray for power and strength because God gives you power and strength through weakness. So if you want to, if you want to be weak, pray for power and strength. <laughs> God will make your knee go out or something or, you know, um, <laughs> you know, or something. I'm not, you know, God doesn't do that. But, but do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You hear what I'm saying? And this is the key to the new covenant. Uh, you, you know, Satan is very impatient. And it's because he has nowhere to draw from. If you get a word or an, inkling that you have to do something right now that's not from god because god's mm -hmm. never in a hurry god is never in a hurry timing is important but god's never in a hurry if you get this rushed feeling urgency that's not from the holy spirit if you have to do this just right now well that isn't god because we we're taught now this is the new covenant this all has we're coming back to the new covenant because that's what this is all about. The new covenant is Jesus Christ is our well. He is our resource. That's where the fruit comes from. If you are in a bind, where do you go to overcome that problem? Now, there's a lot of people who say, oh, you just pray, the, do these six simple steps. You pray this simple prayer. You go to this program. You read this book. No. no. That'll get you by for a season, but it won't ever fix anything. The only thing that's going to fix things for you is to go into him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go into him. Go back to him. He only, and what does it say in Jeremiah? Then you will be my people and I will be your God. You will be my children and I will be your father. And this reading is coupled with this passage here. And Jesus says that his time has been glorified, for him to be glorified has come. Why? Because Greeks have come to see him in Jerusalem. At the Passover, so this is the beginning of just before Holy Week. This is the day before Jesus, or right after he raised Lazarus from the dead, and just before the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, these Greeks come to see him. And Jesus realized that his fulfillment of all things was coming because his goal, his ministry, was to bring Torah to the nations. To bring the knowledge of God to the whole earth, not just to Israel. And the nations have come. And so he says, if I be lifted up, all nations, everyone will come to me. And this is the new covenant. 
every so often, you know, I'm sharing why we worship the way we do on Sunday, where it came from. Because it's about every week, you know, we are born with amnesia. Human beings are born with amnesia. And we forget who we are. And in my new book, I've said, I say several times, we're going through a collective identity crisis at the moment. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. The United States, uh, they, they've they now said that, that church attendance in the United States has dropped 50% since the year 2000. I think it's very interesting. That's the same time that the Gospel Coalition increased and became ascendant. In a meaningless, mm -hmm. consumer Christianity has replaced the gospel. That's right. These, these things we do are about the new covenant. It's about who you are. It's always being brought back to Jesus. Always being brought back to Jesus. He is the fulfillment. He is the only one who can take away our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, we have to be, and our lives have to be marked by his reality every day. Yes. If I be lifted up, I will draw everyone Amen. to myself. Yeah. Let us pray. Father, we just give you thanks for how glorious and wonderful the new covenant is. We thank you that you've called the people to yourself. So we bless you. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord. And of course, you don't know Jesus if you haven't made a commitment to Christ. You know, we, we this is there's always a chance. Contact me. We're having the Easter Vigil in two weeks. And uh we always want to make sure people know Jesus. We want to bring you into the kingdom. And, uh, were there any questions about what we've done so far? Why is there anything I said that might be like what you're curious about? I do, actually. So you said not to pray for or when you know people pray for certain things for you. So my question is, is what would be a better prayer. Am I wrong? A better prayer. Well, you know, what we what we do pray, this is, you know, and this is very important. And I, sh I should have said this earlier, but I'll say it now. So do you know what a soulish prayer is? Have you ever heard that term? Mm -hmm. uh, a soulish prayer is a prayer that sounds good. And often they're prayers that we've inherited. They're ways of praying that people... Uh, one great one is uh, traveling mercies for you. When you ask the person, what does traveling mercies mean? And they don't know. And the, it assumes something bad's going to happen. So when we, uh, when we pray, it, we wait on the Lord. Uh, the best way to pray is to sit with Jesus and listen and say, okay, Lord, how are you praying? I want to come into agreement with your prayer. What is your word for this situation? Yeah. And that's the prayer to pray. It gives someone strength in this situation. Usually they're already in a mess. Don't make it worse. Um, and and the, the, the thing, the problem with soulish prayers, they, they sound theologically good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people pray theologically great prayers. Often there were their prayers that are in the wrong time or the wrong season. And so, um, you know, whether you understand it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you operated it in it or not, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And the words that you say over other people have great power, soulish prayers, Christian prayers that are not from the Lord are much worse than That's witchcraft. Right. Much That's worse right. than witchcraft. Because you have all your authority in Christ that you're directing toward a situation. 
Uh, and I've seen people gum gum up the works, stop the flow mm -hmm. of God again mm -hmm. and again and again. So if you don't know what to pray for a person, see, one of the things we think is that if we don't know what to pray, we should just pray something, like at a prayer meeting or whatever. And there's a lot of culture, cultural stuff in that. Desi Arnaz once said to his daughter, if you don't know what to do, don't do anything. So if you don't know how to pray, don't. And when people ask you to pray for them, you know, if you can't, you know, I pray in the spirit. But if I don't know what to pray for people, I, I just pray, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in that situation. And that usually is all I pray. Unless God gives me something. Um, because, you know, our expertise is is not faith it's a false faith our knowledge as dr cho said in korea our knowledge is a form of false faith mm -hmm. so people have a lot of knowledge but it's not really in tune with god and so god doesn't do anything that's often mm -hmm. why god doesn't heal because people are praying things without listening to god mm -hmm. um, and when you get in alignment with the holy spirit uh things shift it's very interesting i had some of this this morning you know i've been praying about a couple situations and i just said lord i trust you i surrender to you so show me how to pray and the lord told me to pray about something that completely boggled my mind it was completely unrelated and it turned out it was a word he had given me some time ago that i just wasn't didn't i wasn't really resisting it but it was what I needed to, I was not in alignment with it. <laughs> and when I got into alignment with it, whew, everything changed. And prayer started to get answered. Interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, praise the Lord. I have a thought from that, that it's almost like, more like rather than specifically with the faith example, rather than praying that someone would have faith, you're praying in faith that whatever the Lord has given you, you know, you're that's, then agreeing with. That's much better. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's much better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, how many of you know all the the wild rides with living in, living arrangements I've had in my life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, God has given me words about where to live and where to go and london's a great example because it's an expensive proposition and i've said uh told people about it and first people will say uh um well that's too expensive you need to do something else mm -hmm. that's been the first that's been the major reaction from most christians that i've talked to uh, but then the second thing and Rachel, she's just spent a week in New York. So, I mean, my my point of reference was pretty uh, pretty high already. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty real. Now the Lord is like, you're going to be spending more time in New York. All right, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Uh, Boston, right. you know, Boston was more expensive than New York. Boston mm -hmm. was more expensive than London. People don't know this. You know, so rather than say, well, then they pray for me. Oh, give him more faith for this. You know, it's like, well, why don't you have faith and write me a check? <laughs> well, they didn't. So, but, you know, so there's all these people praying that I have more faith to live in London. No, I need money to live in London. I didn't need That's any right. more faith. I think going into London with no money. Honey, is faith. Monday and That's no faith. To stay, That's faith. That's and I come home on Friday not knowing where I've been. That's faith. I That's think right. I mastered that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Let's master something else. Let's master <laughs> stewardship of large amounts of money. Um, <laughs> that was all. <laughs> well, since Rachel's uh, Rachel's mentioned New York, um, you know it's really funny because. We had a conversation about this before. 
she went. And I just wanted to say it, it's been a really interesting answer to prayer for me because you know, New York has always been on my heart. And the Lord had given us promises about going into New York. And so this is how the Lord works. You know, the Lord doesn't move us into blobs. What no. he does is he sends people out. And I want to tell you all that there's nobody in this house that I'm more uh, confident in and more proud of and have less have no fear about going into New York and carrying on than Rachel. Rachel's really uh, ready to do it. So I'm very excited about this and uh, I was very encouraged by what's already happened. So praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Thanks for listening. If these messages have helped you, please like, subscribe, support and share. You can find out more about Belonging House Fellowship in the description. No matter what's happening in your life, remember, fear not, God can be trusted.